Good afternoon. Uh, let me introduce you my PhD topic, how to optimize the surgical treatment in ulcerative colitis, just briefly. Uh, my name is Laura Todd. I'm a second year PhD student uh, and I have the vision to provide the best achievable therapy to IBD patients. For that, I have the mission to contribute to the clarification of some questionable parts in the surgical care of IBD patients. I have the help of my supervisor, Paul Miheller, my scientific methodology supervisor, Anna Trans, my co-investigator, Hoynal Sekei, and my statisticians and my project student. I have two ongoing projects now. Let's move on to the first one. The first is a comprehensive analysis of the effect of obesity on postoperative complications in UC patients. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis. Just some sentences about the background. The prevalence of ulcerative colitis is around 200 per 100,000 people. Around one-fifth of the UC patients will need to have colectomy, and the majority of these operations are elective. On the other hand, approximately one in two adult UC patients are overweight or obese. The effect of obesity on postoperative complications is uncertain now, so our aim was to investigate the effect of obesity on postoperative complications in UC patients. We have the question whether obesity is associated with early and late postoperative complications. We use the PICO framework to answer that. Uh, the population was adult UC patients undergoing colectomy. We compared the obese and the non-obese group, and the outcome was the early and the late postoperative complications. We have hypothesized that, uh, the, uh, that, that obesity increases the rate of early and late postoperative complications. On this figure, you can see the importance of prehabilitation with the blue and the orange line, and you can see the effect of complications with the orange and the green line. On this flowchart, you can see uh, that we uh, started our selection with more than 6,000 hits with a, a search key of with four domains. One was uh, about the disease, one reflects the operation, one was about the complication, and one focuses on the nutritional status. And the end of the at the end of the selection, we uh, have found three eligible full texts. We had uh, three main uh, outcomes of uh, these uh, studies. Uh, the first is the length of hospital stay. We included three retrospective cohort studies. The first and the second one was propensity score match studies. This is why the heterogeneity could be so low. Uh, as a measure of effect, we used mean difference, and at the end of our analyze, uh, the mean difference was 0 0.36. This, although this uh, result reached the level of statistical significance, we did not really believe that these six hours that obese patients spend more in hospital uh, is clinically relevant. The second outcome is the complications in 30 days. We included the same three retrospective cohort studies. The measure of effect was odds ratio, and the result was 1.08. This is neither statistically significant nor clinically relevant. And as the third outcome, we uh, were curious about the septic complications, which, which is the more feared complication. Uh, so we, uh, we focuses on that. We included the same studies, we used odds ratio, and our result was 1.11. This is neither statistically significant nor clinically relevant to. Our uh, results was very uh, low uh, evidence category. So we can conclude that we didn't find a clinically relevant difference between the investigated groups. So we can say that obesity with this cutoff value is not a primary consideration in prehabilitation, although more investigation is needed, uh, focuses on more types of complications, and uh, a use, uh, with the use of uh, stratified BMI categories, and uh, with a look at the long-term complications. 
Our study has strengths and limitations. Uh, this is the first comprehensive data from high quality studies, valuable data sets, and we use rigorous methodology. Although the low number of included studies, the type of the studies, and the lack of the, the uh, separate data about uh, uh, long-term complications limits our investigation. Here you can see our manuscript status. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday we got back uh, the rejection of our manuscripts from the JCC. Uh, so uh, tomorrow we will move on. And uh, we have the second project investigating the surgical outcomes of different pouch techniques. This is a systematic review and meta-analysis too. Just some sentences about the background again. The incidence of ulcerative colitis is between 9 and 20 per 100,000 people per year. About one-fifth of patients will uh, need to have colectomy. Uh, the ilal pouch and anastomosis is a gold standard surgery for UC patients, but uh, nowadays we have more approaches for that. Uh, the open, the laparoscopic, the robotic, and the transanal ones. Uh, so our aim is to compare the effect of different different types of approaches on surgical outcomes. We asked whether open, laparos open laparoscopic transanal or robotic surgery is associated with fewer postoperative complications after pouch surgery. We used the PICO framework where the population was the, patient, uh, was, uh, the patients undergoing proctocolectomy uh, with the pouch and anastomosis. We compared the laparoscopic surgery with the open, the robot, and the transanal uh, approaches. And uh, we uh, focuses on the early and late postoperative complications again. We hypothesized that the transanal and the robotic surgery, surgery is associated with fewer uh, complications. Uh, this is important because uh, with the uh, choose of better approach, we can decrease the potential risk of complications and uh, health recovery. Uh, we um, have the search key uh, which contains two domains. The first reflects to the uh, pouch operation and the second one reflects to the type of the approach. And we did the systematic search uh, in uh, January. We had uh, 2,544 hits and uh, after the duplicate removal, uh, 1,900 uh, remains and we are working on the title and abstract selection with Heine. Uh, here you can see that uh, our title and abstract selection is around uh, uh, 80 uh, percent and we have now 67 included abstracts. And uh, as a summary of my uh, projects, you can see that uh, both of them uh, focuses on the uh, postoperative complications uh, of pouch surgery in UC patients. And we would like to uh, working on that more because uh, this is a really interesting topic. And I'd like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Confucius uh, that our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Thank you for your attention. Hi, so I have a question regarding your first project. Um, you used the common BMI definition for obesity. Now, yeah. Yes, we used a cutoff value with 30 kilogram per quarter meter. Um, this was interesting because at first we would like to use different BMI categories, but we don't have enough data for that, so we can use just one cutoff value for that. So my question would actually be, I've, I've seen some publications that in IBD, sarcopenic obesity is quite common. And in this one, they might have a normal BMI, but a high body fat percentage. So did you come across any papers that use a different definition of obesity? Uh, we have found just uh, uh, papers about the, uh, with the definition of BMI, but uh, they didn't check the sarcopenic patients. Okay, so you didn't see any papers about body fat percentage or anything? No, in these uh, studies, no. Uh, I read one uh, uh, study uh, with the CT scan definition of obesity, but we can pull uh, that uh, together with the BMI definition, unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs>